Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to look at the ball mill. We'll look at all of the main parts that make up a ball mill. We'll look at exactly how it works. We'll look at when you're likely to see ball mills and in which industries. And then we'll have a look at some of the interesting design and operational considerations associated with a ball mill. So let's start first by going through some of the main parts of a ball mill. We use a three-phase motor to drive the ball mill. That is this item here. The motor connects to a gearbox. And this gearbox reduces the shaft speed. And we get the secondary shaft, which is connected to this gear. And it will cause this gear to rotate. And that, in turn, rotates a ring gear. You see the ring gear? It's a circular gear. And this ring gear connects to the ball mill drum. So when the motor rotates, it's causing some gears in the gearbox to rotate. Then a secondary shaft is rotating onto this little gear here. And that in turn rotates the ring gear. The ring gear is connected to the ball mill drum. The ball mill drum is measured by its length. That is from where my mouse is here all the way to the other end. And we'll also measure the ball mill drum by its diameter. You can see the diameter if we come over to this side. Diameter is roughly where this circle is here. We have two bearings that are used to support the weight of the drum and everything contained within it. Here is one bearing. And the other bearing is at the opposite end. Here is the other bearing. We feed material into the ball mill through this section here. That is our inlet. And we have a discharge at the opposite end, which is this section here. We take a cross section. We can see inside the ball mill, there are actually some balls lying along the middle. I'll back it up slightly. We go inside the ball mill. We're now inside the ball mill and we can see that we're inside the cylinder. You can see that one end is grated and the other one is not. If we turn off the cross section, you can see that inside there are some plates that are attached to the inside of the drum liner. And these plates are actually referred to as armor. So how is the ball mill working? What is occurring inside the ball mill? Well, let's zoom out again and we'll talk our way through the entire process so that we can figure out exactly what's occurring. The three phase motor rotates and it will usually be controlled by a variable speed drive. So we can increase or decrease the rotational speed of the ball mill. As the motor rotates, the ring gear also rotates, which rotates the drum. When the drum rotates, the balls inside the ball mill also begin to move. The size of the balls used depends upon the size of the drum. Typical ball sizes are two to three inches in diameter, although ball sizes of up to four inches in diameter are now being used. Now we try to animate this model directly through a web browser, which is how I'm accessing it now, but it was actually quite difficult to do. Let me just show you though what happens when the ball mill is rotating. You can see our balls are bouncing around a little bit. This is slightly exaggerated. Typically the balls would sit in the toe of the ball mill. That is the center line closest to the ground. And when the ball mill starts to rotate, the balls will slide up the side and they'll be held in place by centrifugal force. So think of it as the balls being thrown out to the side as they're dragged along by the rotating drum. At some point they get up to around here and the weight of the balls overcomes the centrifugal force which is causing them to cling to the inside of the liner. So at about this height here, the weight of the balls will cause them to fall or tumble and they will tumble back down to roughly where I am now. So this is the path of the balls along here, sticking to the side, sticking to the side, up to here. All of a sudden they weigh a bit too much, gravity pulls them back down and they'll land somewhere around here. 
Now, if this ball mill was being used for ore, for example, or hard rock, then normally the ore will be crushed before it enters the ball mill, and then it will be fed into the ball mill either wet or dry. Dry means that we use very little water or moisture, and wet means that we add water and form a slurry, and that slurry is going to occupy about 50% of the ball mill's entire volume. Typically, the ball mill may be charged with 30 to 45% of balls. However, when we have a wet ball mill, then approximately 15% may form a slurry. That is a mixture between the water and the crushed ore, sometimes also referred to as pulp. As the balls drop down onto this slurry, and some of the slurry is also taken up with the balls, the balls are going to impact with the slurry, that is to say the ore and the water, and they're going to grind it. That's where we get our size reduction. If you like this engineering video tutorial, then feel free to check out some of the others on our website. We have over 30 hours of engineering video content and hundreds of interactive 3D models. If you'd like to access the 3D model seen in this video, then head over to savry.com. If you like this video, feel free to like it or share it on social media, it really does help us out and allows us to produce more and more content. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks very much for your time.